Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to take you guys through my frozen embryo transfer experience. Um, for those of you who are new here, I did do a video on my IVF experience from consultation to egg retrieval. We did not do a frozen or a fresh transfer. We did a frozen transfer. So, um, I don't have any experience with a fresh transfer, but I do have this experience with um, our frozen transfer. So if you are interested to see what that was like for us and maybe what you could expect if you're going to be doing a frozen embryo transfer, go ahead and keep watching. Like I said, I did a video on our IVF um, story, and this is kind of the second part to that, the actual transferring the embryo part of the story, which is a big deal. And for us, we were super lucky that it was successful. Um, we did our frozen embryo transfer in August, and we are currently pregnant with our first baby girl, um, our first baby, and um, we are 26 weeks, so... We are very lucky. We know that IVF and like any part of the process, you know, is not always successful for everyone. And so we feel very blessed, very grateful that our story worked out the way that it did. So let's jump into it. So after our egg retrieval and the, we got the PGS test results back, um, our doctor just told us, hey, when you're ready to do the transfer, go ahead and give us a call on the first day of your cycle and we'll get things going then. So we did tell them it would probably be a couple months before we were ready to do the frozen embryo transfer. So it was about, um, we were planning on May and we got the PGS test results in March. So yeah, a couple months. Um, and then because of travel and uh, just some things during May, um, we weren't gonna be able to do it that much. So in June, I called up my doctor on the first day of my cycle and we got things going. So I just wanna remind everyone that everyone's protocol is gonna be different. Everyone's clinics are gonna be different um, as to how they uh, conduct a frozen embryo transfer. So this is just my experience and hopefully you can um, gain some insight as to what it would be like for you, or if you're just curious what a frozen embryo transfer is like for someone, then this is just my experience. Not everyone will have the same uh, experience and protocol as I did. Okay, so when I called in um, and let them know that my cycle had started, they went ahead and called in a birth control pill prescription and um, told me to go pick that up a couple days later and start birth control. Um, and then they scheduled me a consultation. I actually have my calendar. This is the first calendar because I actually had to cancel a, uh, a cycle. So we'll get into that. But um, so I started on a Wednesday, my cycle called them that day. They um, asked me to start birth control on Friday, um, pick up the prescription and, you know, start that on Friday. So two days after my cycle started. And then um, they also got me into the consultation that Friday morning. So um, in the consultation, we met with our IVF coordinator and she just went over, you know, um, like what our schedule would be like, what, what our calendar would be like, what um, when our transfer date would most likely be. Um, and you know what medications we'd be on. I was put on birth control to, she said, to not only like control my ovaries and like my cycle, but to put me on the calendar schedule of when my doctor was doing transfers. So that's probably the main reason why I was put on birth control, which was fine. I get it. They have to run their clinic a certain way and do their transfers and scheduling and stuff all a certain way to maximize uh, what they're doing because they are so busy. 
So for me, she wanted me on birth control for two weeks. Um, that's what this calendar had. And then, um, so two weeks from when I started, I could stop birth control and expect my period to come that weekend. Um, so I did, I started birth control and went through those two weeks. And for me, I did not like birth control. I know a lot of women can say this when they're going through IVF, like birth control sometimes is the worst part of IVF. It, it is like, it, it throws everything out of whack. You just don't feel like yourself. And I remember having a lot of cramps and stuff when I was on birth control. So that was no fun. So after the two weeks of birth control, I did start my period after I stopped taking it. And I think I got my period on Sunday and... And just to note, they had me on a prenatal vitamin the whole time, too. They wanted me taking prenatal, like, even when I, in the months that I wasn't doing um, any treatments or whatever, they just said, just keep going with your prenatal vitamin. Just wanted to note that. Uh, so then I was scheduled for um, a baseline ultrasound on, a, like, the last day of my cycle, basically which was a Tuesday. Um, and at this time, they also wanted all of our consent forms due um, and all of our like money due for the frozen embryo transfer. We had to pay it all up front. Um, and then the plan was to also start um, a baby aspirin that day, as well as Estradiol Valorate which is an injection that I was going to be doing twice a week to, on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, some people take estrace, I know, and that's like an oral estrogen pill, but I was just doing an injection twice a week, which I much preferred based off of what my friends who had to do the oral estrace, their symptoms were way worse than I had on um, estradiol like injection. So at this baseline ultrasound, they were checking to just see if my, you know, reproductive organs were ready to accept a transferred embryo. Um, with this, they did a saline ultrasound. So that's where they do like shoot a saline solution into your uterus to kind of see how things are moving around and if you're clean and clear in there. And when they did that, um, they actually found that I had some polyps. Polyps are just basically like skin tags that are inside your uterus and it makes for a very bumpy, not smooth um, lining, I guess. And that's not ideal for a transfer. You can still get pregnant that with polyps. I'm sure plenty of people do, but my doctor was just like, if we're gonna do a transfer, we should have a clean and ready uterus um, for a transfer. So they suggested we do a hyster hysteroscopy. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm like forgetting how to pronounce all of these things, but it's basically a surgery where it's just an outpatient surgery. It's nothing crazy. Um, they go in and they scrape the lining of your uterus, scrape um, away all those polyps. So it's essentially the same amount of time that it would take for like a, um, an egg retrieval surgery and the recovery is even easier. So they weren't too worried about it messing up my um, transfer schedule. They weren't going to change anything, my transfer date or anything. They were like, we're good to go. We don't need to worry about, um, about doing like anything as far as, uh, like, making any changes to the schedule. I didn't think we'd have any issues. And now we have to do another surgery. It's so frustrating. I don't think it changes the schedule like of our frozen embryo transfer at all though. I think we're still on schedule for the same transfer day and stuff. But we're on schedule because they want to do it quickly so they don't grow back. Yeah. So we did the surgery just a few days after um, the saline ultrasound and uh, everything went well 
it was a very smooth, easy procedure. It is hysteroscopy day. Wave to the people. <laughs> you always get scared. It's going to be like the best five hours of your life. Even though the surgery is only like 30 minutes or an hour. Did it. Time to go home for a nap. And as far as recovery goes for the surgery, it was like, I don't know. I was fine by the next day. I was totally normal. I didn't have any sort of pain. I had a little bit of bleeding, I think, um, but that was all normal. So everything was good to go for the transfer. Um, they just asked me to come in for another baseline ultrasound and lining check a few days after the surgery. So I went into this baseline ultrasound knowing that I could possibly not be in the best condition to do a transfer. You know, there could be something wrong um, with whether it was with the surgery, like recovery or whether I had a cyst or whatever. Um, I knew there could be things that could get in the way of my transfer date that I was expecting. Um, but I really wasn't too worried about it. At this ultrasound, this baseline ultrasound, they did find that I had a pretty decent sized cyst. Um, but they did tell me that if the cyst wasn't like give, like giving off estrogen or whatever, like if it was dormant, then we could still move forward forward with the transfer. But if it was giving off estrogen, then we would have to cancel the cycle. Um, so I did some blood work and then they told me they'd call me later that day and let me know if we were still good to go with the transfer. So we just finished. We're done. And she got her blood drawn. Her yeah. The lining of her Plus uterus her. is quite thin, which is what we want at this point in the process. All we have to do now is just wait until they call me later today and they tell me your estrogen levels are great and you can start. With the hormones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no problems with any cysts or anything stupid like So there's one cyst on her left ovary. She thinks it, it was ginormous. <laughs> In fact, it's that's bulging that's out that's right that's as we speak. <laughs> but that cyst I'm is actually like, life. it's a cyst of teeth and hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's the closest thing she's growing to a baby right now. <laughs> so in this case, unfortunately, my cyst that I had was giving off estrogen. And so my body was just not in a place where we could do the transfer. So they ended up canceling the cycle and telling me to just continue to be on the birth control and that should reduce the size of the cyst and hopefully just get rid of it altogether. And this was very upsetting, I'm not gonna lie, because it once you get that date, that transfer date, you just start thinking like, oh, if I do the transfer this date, then I'll probably have my baby in this month. and you just start getting excited and I don't know. It, it was just frustrating to have that little bump in the road and have to wait and to have to be on birth control for another month essentially until my next cycle started again. So from there, my doctor just told me to continue on birth control and give them a call basically when my cycle was supposed to start and they scheduled me basically to stop taking um, the birth control I think it was the like 29th or something of July. So at this point, it would, be, would have been like five weeks since, since we started. Um, so that's how long I was on birth control. And so I did that. I stopped taking birth control, let my cycle start, called them, and we went in for another like consultation. Not necessarily consultation, just like a little touch base meeting with my IVF coordinator where she gave me my new IVF calendar and kind of uh, walked me through the appointments and how everything was gonna play out for that month. Um, and she did give me my transfer date and um, told me to come back in a couple days for my baseline ultrasound and lining check and all that stuff. So that's what we did. We went back a couple days later and because I had already paid for the cycle, um, on our baseline ultrasound from the month before. We didn't have to make any payments or sign any cons consent forms. 
Oh, and I did want to mention with those consent forms, we had to sign how many embryos we wanted to transfer. We had to know at that time. So all of that stuff was already taken care of. Um, we just had to go in and get the ultrasound and make sure my lining was where it was supposed to be and that cyst was gone. So luckily we were um, given the okay after the ultrasound and blood work that everything looked good, my lining looked good, the cyst was absolutely gone, like they couldn't see any signs of that thing. So I was very grateful. And then they instructed me to start um, 0.15 milliliters, I think that's what it was, of the estradiol injection every Friday night. So that ultrasound was on a Wednesday and then so the following Friday was when we started our first injection for the um, transfer part of this process. And those injections, instead of being in your stomach, like all of the like stimming for the egg retrieval injections were, these were all going to be done in my tushy. Well, it's like kind of like your upper hip area, um, low back, kind of your bum, <laughs> but not, not like right smack on your butt. It's just a little bit higher. So we did the estradiol that Friday night, and then we also did it again Tuesday, so we would be doing it every Tuesday and Friday night, and we were supposed to do it right at like 10 p.m., I think. So we did that, and then went in a week later um, for our second little lining check and blood work appointment, because um, the estradiol is supposed to help thicken the lining to where it's supposed to be at to accept an embryo. So... At my second lining check, everything looked great. Things were just good to go. And so at that point, they instructed me to start progesterone and oil injections um, like a couple days after that. So five days before the transfers, generally, I think, when you start progesterone and oil injections. Um, and then we were also supposed to do, well, just I was supposed to do a Z-pack five days before the transfer as well, just to make sure I didn't have any, you know, sicknesses that could flare up and interfere with the transfer. So we did our progesterone and oil injections every morning around 8 a.m. And then um, on, you know, Tuesdays and Fridays, we continued the estradiol injections in the evening. And I know everyone freaks out about the progesterone and oil injections, and I did too at the beginning. They're freaky, the needle is long, like it's not a pleasant experience, but there are a lot of tips and a lot of things you can do to make the process a little bit smoother and not so terrifying. Um, by the time I was, you know, 10 weeks pregnant and stopping the progesterone and oil injections, I was giving them to myself. So it just became like a daily thing. It wasn't like a big deal. Um, but yeah, at first Eric was giving me the injections and I have a video on how um, I gave them to myself. So if you guys are interested and want to know how um, to give them yourselves or like tips on how to do progesterone and oil injections, I will go ahead and link that video below in the description. So a couple days before my transfer, I got a call from my IVF coordinator and she just confirmed that um, the time of my transfer was going to work, that everything was set and ready to go that I had been doing my injections and so um, they scheduled me out to do my transfer at 1 30 well actually 2 p.m but I was supposed to be there at 1 30 a 1 30 p.m and um, they didn't really tell me anything about how to prepare, prepare for it they didn't tell me I couldn't wear makeup they didn't tell me to drink water before because I know you're some people say like you're supposed to go in with a full bladder or whatever um, I kind of heard that you had to go in with a full bladder, so I did make sure to drink a little water before going in. Um, but yeah, we just like hung out that morning, went to lunch, um, 
and then headed over to the doctor's office to do our transfer. It's transfer day! This morning I went to my sister's house and worked out with her and then I cleaned the house like crazy, did a face mask, did our progesterone and oil shot. Just wanted to be so ready for today so that I can come home from the transfer and just command me chill and boss Eric around. <laughs> And because we did the PGS testing, we decided to just transfer one embryo. We thought that that was a good place to start. Let's just start with one. I didn't really want twins. Um, I mean, of course I'd be so grateful for twins, but I just didn't want to like give myself that when I thought we could be successful transferring just one. So for us, when we got to the um, fertility clinic, we were checked in. They brought us back to the transfer room. Um, I think it's where they do all their transfers. They might have a couple of them, but it looked like it was pretty set up for just transfers. Um, <clears throat> so I laid on the bed and um, like undressed from the waist down, laid on the bed. It was really similar to an IUI, honestly. They dimmed the lights in the room so that we could see um, a video of the procedure happening like live which was really neat especially for Eric because he was there in the room with me and yeah we didn't have to like wear like I know a lot of people have to wear like hair nets and stuff like that but yeah we were just in our regular clothes and seemed pretty casual um it was a really really super neat experience one thing one that I will remember vividly forever I think <laughs> Pretty cool. So after the transfer, um, they let us just kind of lay there. Well, let me lay there for a little bit and just kind of take it all in because it was kind of an emotional, like, heavy experience. Um, it didn't hurt. Like I said, it was a lot like a um, an IUI. So you feel the them opening your cervix and stuff, but um, it, it didn't really hurt or anything. Um, she did the assistant like the nurse assistant she was pressing on my stomach really hard maybe that's why they tell you to drink a lot of water um but she's pressing because they do an ultrasound while they are while the doctor's actually transferring the embryo um so he can see where to you know where he's what he's doing um but yeah she was pressing really hard on my like bladder and my uterus um with the ultrasound. So yeah, it was a super neat experience. Not painful really at all. Um, a little uncomfortable, but overall just a really cool experience. And I do appreciate that they let us kind of stay in that room for 20 minutes or so and just sort of soak in all of, all of what just happened, I guess. Um, cause at that point you are technically pregnant, um, pregnant until proven otherwise, which call it poopo or whatever um but yeah so it was really cool a really neat experience um and then I got dressed and we left and it was just kind of like okay I guess I'm pregnant now <laughs> uh, it was weird but it was also so cool um and then my doctor did have me do bed rest that the rest of that day and that he calls them princess days um so the rest of that day was bed rest day and then Thursday so we did our transfer on Wednesday the 15th of August and the Thursday and Friday were also bed rest days so as much as I could he just said just stay to your bed you know get up and go to the bathroom or if you really like want to go downstairs and make something in the kitchen or you know that's fine just try and rest as much as you possibly can and I know that there's differing opinions about that um, I think you should just do whatever your doctor says to do um, cause I know that there's people that think bed rest is like a negative thing after a transfer. And then there's some people that think it's a positive thing and it can be like bring success. I don't know. So I just did what my doctor told me to do. And we had people coming over and like visiting me. My sisters came over to visit me, my friends. I had a lot of people bring me stuff, which was so, so nice. Um, it was just, yeah. It was really nice. Um, it was hard for me to stay in bed, but um, I just 
knew that it was important to my doctor that I did that, and Eric was very strict on making me stay in bed, which was good. So then after the two days of bed rest, they told me that I could, you know, do some light walking and um, return to basic normal daily activity. Just don't do any crazy workouts. Um, just take things somewhat easy in that department. Um, and then I continued on my medications, my uh, baby aspirin, my prenatal vitamin, that sort of stuff. So then it was nine days after my transfer that they scheduled me for a pregnancy test. I actually asked to come in as early as possible because I knew I was gonna be stressing about that. So I went in around 7.45 that morning. It was a Friday morning and got my blood drawn. Um, and then they told me to, you know, not expect a call before 6 p.m. So I was like, okay. So I just started going about my day. And then at noon, I got a call from the fertility clinic and I was like, oh my gosh, freaking out. Um, and they ended up, yeah, calling me way earlier than I expected to let me know that our beta results were in and they were looking really good. I think we were at, uh, I think it was 215 was our number. So we were definitely pregnant is what our IV, IVF coordinator who called us t told us, which was awesome. Um, I kind of felt like it worked. I have a video um, on this channel that talks about my symptoms um, between the transfer and when we actually got a confirmation of pregnancy. Um, and so I can, you can go check that out and see what symptoms I was having, but I did feel like it worked. Um, but there's still always that, like, there's that doubt that maybe it didn't work. Like, you know, you're always going to have that little twinge of doubt, but it worked for us and we were so lucky and so glad, so grateful. Like it was just amazing. Um, and then that I remembered I took a pregnancy test right after she called me and told me that my numbers were good and that I was pregnant. I hadn't taken a pregnancy test in a year or more. Like I, I just stopped taking pregnancy tests and, um, I didn't test early. I know a lot of people test early, but I just, I didn't want to go through the heartache of that because it can kind of mess with you because you can get false positives or false negatives or whatever. If you test too early, you're, you can get differing results than what the actual result is. So I decided not to test early and then it was really fun to take a pre pregnancy test right after she told me that I was pregnant and just see that little pregnant thing pop up. It was really cool. So that was basically our um, experience with our frozen embryo transfer. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I continued to take the medications that I had started with, the estradiol and the progesterone, all the way up until 10 weeks of pregnancy. And if you want me to do a video on what happens after you get pregnant through IVF, like what the appointments are after that, um, what the ultrasounds are like, what medications you have to continue on. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other things, like when you would possibly graduate from your fertility clinic and move on to a regular OB. Um, yeah, I could do a video on what our experience was that way. You can also go back and watch it, um, vlog by vlog, I guess, um, but I can give you kind of an overall um, story on that side of it. <laughs> Let me know if that interests you guys. I'd be happy to make a video on that as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and join our little tribe here on YouTube. And you can follow me as well on Instagram. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.